From the beginning of recorded history, wigs have played an important role. The Egyptians wore wigs to protect their heads from the sun, Roman women wore wigs made from captured barbarians, and men in 18th century England wore wigs to indicate military enlistment, or the practice of law. Today wigs are worn for a variety of reasons including surviving cancer patients who have lost their hair due to chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Learning basic wig knowledge will provide you many salon service opportunities. Our learning objective for this lesson will be to examine the two basic categories of wigs. A wig is an artificial head covering, consisting of a network of interwoven hair. A hairpiece is a small wig, used to cover the top or crown of the head. A hairpiece does not fully cover the head. Cap wigs use a mesh fiber base to which the hair is sewn. They are made in several sizes that require special fittings. Most cap wigs are hand knotted or hand tied. Capless wigs consist of rows of wefts, sewn to elastic strips in a circular or head shaped pattern. Wefts are long strips of hair with a threaded edge. Capless wigs are lightweight and more comfortable for wear. They are generally a healthier choice as they allow air to reach the scalp and prevent excess perspiration. Wigs are constructed in one of three methods. The first method is known as hand-tied. Hand-tied means that every individual strand of hair is hand-tied into the foundation of the wig. A wig of hand-tied construction will generally cost considerably more than other wigs, because the process for tying each strand of hair is quite tedious and time-consuming. The second construction method is called semi-hand-tied, meaning the wig is a combination of machine sewing and hand-tying hair into the wig's foundation. Machine-made wigs are sewn with a sewing machine by stitching the wefts together. Machine-made wigs generally cost much less than hand-tied or semi-hand-tied wigs. Most wigs today are constructed with elastic caps that are made ready to wear. However, some wigs must still be measured and fitted for a comfortable fit for the client. It is important to know how to take proper wig measurements for custom-fit wigs. Wigs listed as a size petite measure up to 21.5 inches. Average sizes measure 21.5 to 22.5 inches, and large sizes measure 22.5 up to 24 inches. The head circumference is the distance around the circumference of the head. Write this number down in inches or the preferred unit of measurement. When measuring the front to the nape, take this measurement with the client's head down facing their feet. Measure from the center front hairline at the forehead, over the top of the crown, and down to the center of the hairline at the nape. Write this number down in inches or the preferred unit of measurement. Measure from one ear where the hairline begins, over the apex of the head, to the top of the opposite ear to where the hairline begins. Again, write this number down in inches or the preferred unit of measurement. The average of these measurements will determine your client's wig size. Ensure that you allow the client's hair to rest normally while taking measurements, and do not flatten or pull the tape measure too tightly so as to ensure a correct measurement. A wig block is a head-shaped form on which to place a wig for cutting, styling, storing, and drying. A head form is usually made of styrofoam or cork, and covered with canvas. Wig service begins by educating the client about how to properly put on a wig. You should begin by instructing the client about how to prepare their hair in a wrap, or similar method, comfortable for wear. Secure the front hairline of the wig in place, and then pull the wig over the top of the head, and down the back. Secure the wig in place as you work, and adjust as needed. Most wigs are cut while on the client's head. You may use blunt, graduated, and layered elevation cutting methods, but due to the nature of wig construction it tends to look less natural. Most stylists prefer to cut wigs in a freeform cutting technique. Dry cutting tends to look more natural and less controlled on a wig. Work in small sections, and look for shapes when cutting wigs. Cutting of a wig should look more like natural hair. Remember the wig is an extension of the client wearing it. Fit the style to the person. Check for balance and proportion. If the color matches close, blend the client's natural hair around the hairline with that of the wig. Make the wig look natural. Do not try to make it look perfect as the imperfections are what help to make the wig look more realistic. The areas that need the most attention to detail will be the crown, the bangs, the part line, and the hairline, as these areas will be the most noticeable when a wig is not appropriately styled. 
as a general rule of thumb, work with the wig's natural fall pattern and behavior. If you find the direction of the knotting and weave created by the wig maker, the results of your style will look odd and forced. Handle chemically treated wigs carefully. Use low heat on human hair and choose products for color treated hair or products designed for wigs. Back them gently around the hairline if the wig does not have a natural look. A wind test is a quick test to determine how realistic a wig looks on a client. To perform a wind test, use a blow dryer on low speed and cool temperature settings to simulate wind blowing the hair away from the face. Observe the movement of the hair. Does it look realistic? Does the wig blend into the hairline? Make any adjustments as necessary. Wigs should be cleaned, reshaped, and restyled at various times. A client who wears a wig continuously for several days may want to have it cleaned more often than a client who wears it only occasionally. Always follow manufacturer's directions for cleaning a wig. But if no instructions are provided, here are some basic guidelines for cleaning wigs. Soak the wig in a bath of lukewarm water with a mild, non-stripping shampoo for approximately 5 minutes. You may gently swirl the wig in the soapy water, but do not get too aggressive, as this can cause damage to the wig. Drain the soapy water, and refill the bath with a clean, lukewarm water to rinse any remaining shampoo from the hair. Drain the rinse water, and add a bit of conditioner to the next tub of water. Drain and rinse again. Once the cleaning process is complete, dry the wig on a rag that will allow air flow from all directions. Wigs can be colored to closer match the client's hair color, or even for something drastically different, depending on the client's desires. You should follow the same principles of hair color. Use semi or demi permanent colors, and always try and test wigs, as some may be missing the cuticle layer, in which case the hair will react differently. Hair used in wigs did not all come from the same hand, so be sure to check your color process regularly and often. Human hair wigs can also be permed just as natural hair. Safety and caution should be practiced, as hair in wigs and additions come from many sources, so the outcome may be unpredictable. With the wig on a head form, perm as you would a natural hand. Be careful not to perm wigs that have been colored with metallic dyes.